Good morning, family. This is Ricky, and welcome to Hope for Today. Happy Wednesday, guys. Let's get over the hump today with Hope for Today. We've been in the story of Jonah, this prophet of God who's called to go and do a hard thing, but instead of obeying the Lord, he runs in the opposite direction. God sends a fish after him to miraculously sustain him until his heart is broken in such a way that he finally relents and persists to do God's will instead of his own will. And we've said that this is somewhat as a caution flag to us when we're running from God, that sometimes God has to put us in some stalemates and some catch-22s and some whales of our own situations to get us to consider our ways and turn our way back to him. Chapter two, uh, Jonah is in the belly of the fish. Remember yesterday we said how it took three days and three nights before he kind of realizes I ain't dead yet. Apparently I can't outrun God. I need to do what God told me to do. And these are echoes of repentance. I don't think it's a full heart transformation yet. As we continue to study Jonah, we'll see that. But it is at least a initial relenting of his will to the will of God in chapter 2 verse 7 he says to God when my life was fainting away I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you and to your holy temple and then he says in verse 8 those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love Jonah here is confessing and explaining that to us as to why it is uh, so easy for us to forsake God and go after something else Jonah acknowledges the fact that I had settled my heart on an idol God instead of the real God. I'd settled my heart on an idol God instead of the real God. I think it was Martin Luther or John Calvin, one of the reformers who said that our hearts are idol factories, which means that our natural disposition of being sinful people who turn away from God instead of naturally righteous people who turn towards God, what it ends up happening is that Satan has sold us a lie that there's someone or something that can be better to us than Christ can. And that was Jonah's situation. Jonah said uh, that my my idol of Jewish supremacy and being better than the Ninevites because they're bad and wicked people, I'd rather that be my satisfaction than my relationship with God himself. This is why Jonah says in in the text, those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. Is there an idol in your heart that you're believing is going to give you more satisfaction than the one and true and real God? Several years ago, Coca-Cola decided that they needed a kind of a reformation of their own. Their sales were slumping. And so they came up with this new idea called uh, New Coke. And they spent millions on the idea. Uh, They marketed it. They had all sorts of new paraphernalia. You can go anywhere in the world back in those days without seeing New Coke everywhere. And it seemed like 1985, when they released it, that New Coke was going to do nothing but succeed. And there was just one problem. New Coke didn't taste good. (laughs) Like everybody hated New Coke. And they canceled the idea 77 days into existence. And what ended up happening is that Coke takes New Coke out and they repackaged the original formula and called it Coca-Cola Classic. And the rest is history. Sales skyrocket and Coca-Cola returned to the number one in sales, a position they continue to hold to this day, all because customers realize that sometimes when those things that are so-called new and improved fail to satisfy you, sometimes it's then and only then that you realize just how good the original really is. What Jonah is saying is that I realize that new Coke can't satisfy me. Only the original can. Wherever you're running after the promises of this world, I want to encourage you to recognize and remember the Lord as Jonah does here. Because idols can never satisfy. Only Jesus can. Give your heart, give your life to him today. And that's hope for today. I'll see you next time.